right, if you're a bit overwhelmed with all the options out there when it comes to fishing kayaks, you are not alone. I mean, these things are crazy. They can range anywhere from $400 to $6,000. So I'm gonna give you six tips or questions you should ask yourself when it comes to buying a fishing kayak. All right, let's go. Tip number one is identify the place where you are going to fish the most. This is what I mean. If you like fishing lakes and ponds like I do, you're not gonna need a super long kayak, maybe a 10 foot, fishing kayak. If you have a lake that you primary fish that's huge, you might want to think about getting a pedal power kayak or some type of motor, especially if that thing is a thousand acres or more. If you like doing open water fishing, now you're probably going to want something a little bit longer and therefore it's going to be a little bit wider. It's going to offer you a little bit more stability. It's going to help you do things like cut through the waves without being slowed down. And likely you'll be covering a lot of water, so you might want to think about investing in a pedal drive or a motor drive for your kayak. Yeah. They make those things. Now, if you're gonna be fishing rivers or streams, you're likely not gonna want a pedal drive because the drive sticks out of the bottom and most rivers and streams, you're gonna be getting into tight spaces, you're gonna be in shallow water, and that's gonna be dragging potentially even breaking your propeller. So for rivers and streams, a shorter kayak and paddle powered might be perfect for you. Tip number two, asking yourself, do you want a sit-in kayak, sit-on kayak, or inflatable kayak? Let me run you through some pros and cons of each. So first, let's talk about the sit-on kayak. That's what I'm on right now, and this thing is super comfortable, and there's a lot of pros to this. One of the pros, it's gonna be super stable. Um, this has a pontoon style haul. I can stand up and fish in this thing. It's easy to get in and out of because it is so stable. You know, another nice thing about the sit on kayaks is they're designed to be self bailing. And what I mean by that is that they have scupper holes, which means if, I, if I'm fishing during the rain, which I actually do a lot, and I've had this water up almost to my ankles before, all I gotta do is pull a scupper plug and the water drains out while I'm fishing. And another huge pro of the sit on kayak is my ability to sight fish. And I'm not just talking about you know, sighting bass out on their beds. I'm talking about the ability to see riprap underwater, the rocks, the stumps, the weed lines, especially in clear water. And that's not an advantage you're gonna have in a sit-in kayak because you're almost out. And you're, actually, you're sitting below the water level. I have a sit-on and a sit-in. And to be honest with you, I don't like fishing in my sit-in. Uh, it's more of a recreational kayak. Um, so if you're really into fishing, I would highly recommend a sit-on kayak to be able to give you those sight lines. It's gonna give you the advantage in catching more fish. And there are some cons. I mean, being up off the water, you are fully exposed to all of the weather, including the wind. If it's cold outside, you're gonna feel the full brunt force of that. Another con, unless you just love spending money, is these things are a lot more expensive than your sit-in kayaks. And so, uh, once again, if it's a hobby and something that you love, maybe something you want to invest in. And a con to one of these things is that it's, since it is bigger and heavier, it's gonna move a bit slower than your sit-in kayak. All right, let's talk about our sit-in kayak. All right, let's talk about a pro. Um, being that you're down in a hall, uh, it's gonna keep you warmer and it's gonna keep you more out of the weather and out of the elements. So that helps out a little bit. All right, another con is you're not able to really sight fish. I was recently in my Sun Dolphin Aruba 10, which is a sit-in kayak, and I was just guessing where I was casting, trying to find holes, and it was really, I just couldn't wait to get back on my sit-on kayak. And so, something to consider if you're considering the two. Yes, they are cheaper, but it's gonna be a detriment to your fishing and your ability to be able to sight out and read the landscape. Oh, the pro to a sit-in kayak is gonna be faster. You're gonna be able to accelerate faster because they are lighter. The con though on a sit-in kayak is they're not gonna be as stable. I mean, most of those sit-in kayaks um, are designed with displacement hulls, which means they're designed for speed. And so you're not gonna be able to stand up and fish. Another con is that it's not self-bailing. I mean, in fact, it's kind of a problem because if you accidentally flip one of those over, uh, they start filling up with water really fast. And another con, they're very difficult to get in and out of. They take a little practice, and trust me, I've seen a lot of guys and girls flip their kayaks trying to get in a sit-in kayak. All right, let's talk about inflatable kayaks, and if you're limited on storage, this may be perfect for you. I recently saw someone, asked them how they liked it, and they're like, hey, it's the only thing that fits in my apartment. So if you have limited places to store things, because these things take up a lot of space, that may be perfect for you. Uh, a con is that they're gonna be less stable because they don't have a pontoon style haul. Con, they're not self bailing. Pro, they're gonna be cheaper than your sit on and sit in kayak. Well, here's a pro. Some of them actually fold up like a backpack. So if you like fishing those hard to reach places where there's no boat ramps, an inflatable kayak kind of acts like a belly boat. So if that's your jam, inflatable kayak might be perfect for you. Another con is the wind. You're gonna be blown all over the place. There's just any amount of wind on the water that day. And another con, of course, it is inflatable. And when you're working with treble hooks and some of your lure has double hooks, all it takes is that fish with that treble hook 
to give a jump and it's gonna hop into the bottom of your boat and start thrashing around. And before you know it, you got a slow leak in your inflatable kayak. All right, tip number three, do you want a paddle powered, pedal powered, or motorized kayak? I mean, your pro to the paddle is that you're gonna be able to sneak up on fish and be super quiet versus the motorized and the pedal. But some of the cons to the paddle power kayak is that you're gonna be slower, you're gonna have limited range, likely gonna be always sitting, gonna be hard to troll, and let's be honest, if you're paddling for hours on end, you're gonna have some fatigue. And if you like fishing, you're always going to have to be adjusting yourself with your paddle, and if you're doing that, it means just more time not fishing. All right, let's talk about the pedal power kayak. This is the one I have and absolutely love. Here's some of the pros to it. It's great for the power fisherman. I am always on the move, trying out new places, but a con is these things are expensive. I believe new, this thing's gonna cost you $2,000. Pro, if you like covering a lot of water, this is gonna be your jam. Con, this thing is heavy, and I know I fish in Southeast Ohio, and I'm constantly putting this thing in and out of my trailer as I go pond hopping. So something to consider. I think this thing bare is 65 pounds. Pro though, this thing is gonna keep my hands free to be non-stop fishing. All I have to do is uh, flick the rudder control every once in a while to get my positioning correct. Uh, the con, these motors are not cheap. They're like eight, nine thousand dollars and the replacement parts are also costly. So something to take in consideration. Another con is maintenance. You have to keep these things greased and oiled. And I just hear a lot of guys on the forums uh, having issues with their pedal drives and really having a hard time getting anybody to help them. Another pro for the pedal powered kayak is that you're using the strongest muscle in your body to power your yak. And if you're out for hours on end, you are gonna get tired also with your pedal power kayak. And let's talk about the motorized. Of course, you're gonna be able to cover a lot of distance and get to your places and your hunting holes quicker. Another pro is that you're gonna be able to fish places that a lot of other kayakers can't even get to because they don't have time. If you fish a big lake with only one or two boat ramps, most kayakers won't have time to get to the other side of the lake and fish some of those honey holes that are uh, under pressure. So having a motorized kayak is going to give you that advantage. Pro, the only fatigue you're going to have is flicking that switch on and off. Con is though, you're going to have to do battery charging and these things are expensive. Last time I looked at a motor for my fishing kayak, it was around $1,200. Pro is that you can get to that honey hole before anybody else does in the morning. Another pro is less fatigue. And of course, if you like to do trolling, you can do that on a pedal power kayak, but you can also do it effortlessly, especially as you're going to and from your honey holes by adjusting the speed on your motorized kayak. All right guys, if you're getting some value, please hit that like button. Let's move on to tip number four. All right, let's talk about stability. Of course, the wider your kayak, the more stable it is going to be because there's more surface areas. So advantages to a wide, stable kayak, you're gonna be able to stand when you're fishing. Con is that the waves and wake is gonna slow you down. Pro is that it's gonna be more comfortable for you. Con is you're gonna get more fatigued over time because it's more weight to move. A pro is that you have more space to carry more gear with you. More lures, more tackle, more poles more just about anything. But a con is gonna be a little bit slower to get going. So if acceleration is important to you, that's gonna be a con to a wider, bigger kayak. There's also advantages to narrower kayaks that have uh, displacement hulls. Pros to these, you're gonna get faster, you're gonna have faster acceleration. It's gonna be easier to paddle long distances and it's gonna cut through waves and wake like a boss. All right, let's talk about tip number five, weight and portability. You know, a good question to be asking yourself before you purchase your fishing kayak is how you plan on using it. Are you an adventure? and you have to pull this thing on and off your roof rack or in and out or trailer 10 times a day? Or do you live in a lake and it's gonna be parked? Do you like to get on a lake and stay there all day long? Do you like to pond hop all day? Or do you like to reach those ponds and lakes that have no boat ramps and they're gonna be underfished? These are all great questions to ask because the weight of these things vary a lot. I know this one, it's one of the lightest fishing kayaks on the market and it's 65 pounds of bear. But I know that can get up to 130 pounds of bear. And when you put all your tackle and gear on there, these things are gonna be weighing around 200 pounds. And I hate for you to end up with a fishing kayak that's too heavy to fish it like you want to fish it and to get to those honey holes that you love to fish. And number six, think about storage. This is what I mean. So when I purchased this fishing kayak, you know, storage was kind of an afterthought. I was so excited about fishing my kayak. I was like, oh, I'll just find a space. But the reality is I didn't have a lot of space in my home. I mean, these things can be anywhere from eight to 15 feet long. So what I had to do is actually go up. So I purchased a hoist system and attached that to the roof of my garage. And so in the off season, I just pulled this thing up and it's nicely stored. So I have a video on that. I'll throw it in the description below. Thank you.